Well, Scott took some of my message out. No, maybe he didn't. <laughs> I still got it. But I had this circle of who and how and what and why. <laughs> Same three that you had. So you popped that up there sometime. But um, what I want to talk about today was the power of partnership. You know, we, we, we know what it means to, to, to have the... I mean, I don't think that we understand the power that gets released when you have partnership. Now, I know last night you said there's people that say they need Jesus only. And that's more than that. One part of it, you only need Jesus for salvation. Jesus Christ is your salvation. But there's an element that God wants to take us past there that requires others. And that's what I want to talk about. The power of partnership. I'm going to read... Chapter, Psalms 133 a little bit. I mean, the, the whole chapter is only a few verses. I'm going to read in a little different version here, the, the IEB. It says, Look how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in such unity. Harmony is like having the special anointing mixture of olive oil poured on the priest's head, running down on his beard. It ran down Aaron's beard onto the collar of his robes. Harmony is as refreshing as the dew of Mount Hermon that falls... On the hills of Jerusalem. There Yahweh pronounces his blessing. Life forevermore. And the other version it says, says that God commands his blessing. It's almost like it has to happen. If you unite with Christ. Knowing who you are. And you allow God to, and you allow God to uh, use you. Including brothers around you. Powerful things come out of your life. God will take you places that you can't take that you can't go on your own. Then we can read in Genesis 11, 1 to 9 that it can also happen the wrong way. The devil can also use those principles of wrong unity. We can read how we can read how they, the children of it, uh, way back in Genesis they decided to build this tower that's going to stick up to the sky so that they'll never be destroyed. And God said, you know, they're actually going to get it accomplished. Nothing happens. Even in the wrong unity, there was power. There was a power being released that was unstoppable in the wrong way. So my question today, do we realize the power that's available in the right way? Do we realize the power that's available in partnership? Because God does everything through partnership. The agreement of partnership, God releases power whenever you partner with your wife Seed, something bursts forth. You can never birth anything of yourself. Just you out there alone. There's stuff, there's stuff that gets released every time that you partner. And the more you partner with God and with others, the more the, more the fullness will get released into your life. You can start going places that you couldn't go before. But then there are these people out there that say, it's just me, myself, and I. I'm going to go out there alone. I'm going to do my thing. It's Jesus and I. And that's right. They can do that. And they're still saved. But they have no idea what they're missing out on in life. They have no idea the resources that are out there that God's waiting to release to them if they would just submit and actually be empowered to go to the next level. You know, there was years ago, there was a situation out in California that I got asked to go along out to a small house church that was starting out there. I didn't know these people from Adam. I got invited because of a friend I know that I was partnering with in the ministry, right? Invited me to go along out there. I had an encounter out there like I never experienced before. As I went out there, I had prophetic words for every one of them. It never happened before in my life or before or after. It was a need for the hour. I was able to go out there and get a download for each one of those people that were there. A few weeks ago, this man called me up for more. Somebody that was in this meeting, called me up for more what I'm seeing in his life. I didn't see him for three years. But he said, you know what? The things you were speaking all came to pass. What would have happened if I would have refused to connect with that other brother that connected me with that person that connected me with those people? Those seeds that are out there would have never happened. They were still in God's will, but they would have never happened because I would have refused to partner with the people around me which allowed more to come forth. So my question is, do we realize what God's doing in this season? God is all about bringing the body of Christ together to partner for a fuller release of what He wants to do. 
But if we don't understand that, how are we going to fulfill it? If we believe, and I see people all over the place that, are, that under, don't understand this concept, they don't realize what they're missing out on. A little bit, I, I, I view it as um, like an, an apostolic hub where here's the vision that God releases. And He gives this person this part of it. And He gives this person that part of it. And He gives this person that part of it. And every person has a piece of this puzzle. And they all want to do their own thing. But if they would all come together, they would actually fulfill and create something that's not been created yet. Because God's all about doing a new thing. Creating a new anointing, a, a new a new revival and something new that's going to push back darkness. But as long as they're arguing and fighting about what, what their part of it is and what they're called to and they can't walk with the rest, then they wonder why God isn't doing anything. And He's doing something in a smaller way. But He's not releasing what He wants to release to the fullest. And that's what God's doing in this day and age. My question is, can we see it? Are we willing to partner with it? Because when two or three people start agreeing on something, the whole earth, everything starts going into motion. So this is what they call apostolic hubs. Where different people in different areas are called to lead out with different things. When that comes together, it creates a synergy and creates a burst. Before that, I'd like to talk about five basic things in life that you need to get there to where God can actually use you to bring forth fruit. The first thing I want to talk about a little bit is, med is uh, meditation. You know, we need to learn to meditate on God's Word. Just like Scott and Todd and everyone else was talking about. We need to learn to spend time in God's Word. We need to learn to know what God's voice is telling us. We need to learn everywhere we go to, to, to think thoughts or that are God thoughts. Not thoughts of what, what everyone else says, but what does the Word of God say? And we need to meditate on that day and night. And as we meditate on the things of God, it starts giving us revelation. Which faith, which releases faith, which takes you to the unseen world. Which is why you were created. But how are you going to get revelation if you don't meditate on God's Word? How are you going to get to step two if you never got to step one? And as you start getting revelation, God starts giving you fresh downloads of what He wants for your life. And all of a sudden you start getting faith. And faith starts rising up. And then you start connecting with like people with other faith. And without faith it's impossible to please God. So these revelations create a motivation. A motivation to do what's right. A motivation to go to prayer meetings. A motivation to get around the people of God. A motivation to make a difference for God. But how can you get motivated if you're not even in God's Word? And you don't even know why you were created. You're just out there because it's the right thing. I mean, you don't, you, don't, you don't know who you are, what you're created for, how, what, why, everything else. You can pop that thing back up sometime. I'd like to see it again. Okay. And then on top of the motivation comes action. As you get meditation, you get revelation, you get motivation, you take action. And we enter into the throne room with boldness. But you're never going to take action if you, don't t if you don't spend time in God's Word and get revelation of God's Word, and get motivated in, in doing God's Word, you're never going to take action. So if you don't get these five basic principles, these four basic principles, you're never going to have fruit. And then you're out there pointing at all the other people that are getting fruit and, and trying to accuse them, but you're not doing the, the steps that it's going to take to get fruit. And, when you, and then fruit and partnership, I believe is in a sense the same thing. Because fruit is your partnership. All of a sudden you see what God wants and you start connecting with others and God starts releasing more and more. You know, you can never gather in all your harvest without helpers. Because your harvest is bigger than you. You can't ever gather all that God has in. And even, even our little minds can never grasp the fullness of what God has for us. Because it's never ending. 
There's so much out there that God wants for us to connect with and actually get involved and actually do. But first of all, we need, to, we, know, we need to know who we are in Christ. We need to know why we're doing it. What is our purpose? Why are we created? You know, I, I heard a study just this week that 2.5% of the people, that life goes a little bit like that. 2.5% of the people change society. This part here changes the direction of the nation. 2.5%. You might say, I don't know that I agree with that. But it's actually a study. They call it innovative. And the reason they can be innovative is because they, they know who they are and they start understanding why they were created and they start doing it. You know, our early, our early forefathers understood who they were and why they were created. And that's why they started changing that whole era of time. Why they were on earth, they were connected to God. God started showing them why. And they started working in it. And they changed that whole scenario of time. And it's the same way in our day and age. If you can connect to the purpose of why you are on this earth for You will make a difference. Then there's 13.5% that they call the early... Now this is a scientific study that they call the early adapters. They start coming behind there. And actually starting to agree here. And then you have... 34% is what they call the early majority. And then you have 34%, which they call the late majority. And then you got like 16%, which are the laggers. They just come along and get whatever's left. So this is a scientific study that actually happens of how the human brain is created. And it all, it all comes back, you know, if you're going to focus on the how and the what, the reason the people don't experience the first part is because they're all focused on the how and the what. They're waiting for the result before, instead of being the result. Instead of knowing why they're on this earth for, they're out there saying, how are we going to do this? And they're copying what everyone else is doing instead of what God's telling them to do. And then they're saying, well, what's it going to look like? God's already put it inside you. But you need to, keep, you need to step out and start walking in it. And the amazing thing about it is, I actually learned this in advertising. They say if you can connect to that why part of a person, you actually get their heart. Even though they don't make any sense, they'll actually come by from you. Because it's how you're created. It's completely opposite. It's completely opposite than common sense. But it, they don't connect to the fear, and it bypasses different parts of the brain, and it connects to the, it connects to the, the part of what God has in them. What God has in you and what God has in me. And it's amazing. And that's what the early church walked in. When, when you connect to the, power, the, the partnership of connecting who God made you, why God made you, and you start stepping out and start doing that, that's what the early church had. That's why our forefathers were so dynamic. Because every time they stepped in there, and all of a sudden it like shot another hole through the umbrella of what I think Steve Stutzman shared that with us already. But it's like another, another area opened up. And that's what's happening now. You know, we have the ability to completely change society by connecting to the purpose of God, of why we're created. You know, there's leaders, and then there, 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 are, and then there are those who lead. Not everybody that we call leader is a leader. He might just be given that name. People don't want what you do. They want why you do it. They want that, that purpose, that, that why part that's in, ingrained in you, who you are and why you do it. They don't, wanna, they don't want to just see what you're doing. They want that part of it. And that's the part that God has put in there. 
And that's the part when you connect with people around you that have that same zeal and that same purpose and that same hunger, all of a sudden it creates like a, a fireball, right? You can put a hot log out on a fire and it burns. But you start putting two or three together and it starts burning hotter. And then you start putting four or five or ten together and the thing starts exploding, right? And all of a sudden it's like light comes out. But those, those logs couldn't come together. That fire, that, that couldn't all come together with one person. Just me, myself, and I, and God. Not to the fullest extent of what God wants. Because God does things through partnership. He does things through bring, bringing His body together to make a bigger impact. A bigger impact of what He wants to do. The way we think and act and communicate is from the outside in. We don't, but too, the, the majority of the people do. The major majority of the people act from the outside in. That's why they let fear to control them. What are people going to think if I do this? I might not have any more friends. It's not going to make, doesn't make sense. And it literally doesn't. It's proven by scientific that the first two parts don't make sense. It doesn't make sense. That's why people don't do it. But the simple part is just doing and being who God made you. Why you do it? Because God showed you to do it that way. It's the simplest part, but it doesn't make sense to the human mind. It's backwards from the way a person's mind thinks. And that's why we need our mind renewed. That's why we need to know who we are in Christ. We need to, we need to bring the known to the unknown. Or the unknown to the known. Actually, both of them will be right. We know it, we bring it to the unknown, and we bring the unknown to the known. <laughs> so, you know, so it's, um, it's, what they call, it's what they call branding at its best. And that's when we send something out, like to make an impact, like a letter or whatever, we bring what we know to the unknown. And then the unknown know. And then it's, that's what they call branding at its best. So that's what we're about to do, Lord willing. So who am I? Who are you? You know, there are three questions in society that everybody wants to know. Who am I? Why am I here? And where am I going? Every person you meet on the street is going to have these, two, these three questions in their heart. Every Amish person, every English person, who am I? Well, I'm a carpenter. No, that's not who you are. What did God design when he created you? What is inside of you? Why are you on this earth? It's that who and that Why? question that's burning inside every person and when you can connect to that and you can prophetically call it out it changes their it changes the way they look at life you know what happened when Peter and John went into the temple they knew who they were they know why they were going there and they were connected to the father they were connected to the purpose that God had and it could and all of a sudden, a situation comes up in there, right in front of them. And they call this guy that's lame to stand up. We still have the same God. Acts of the day, acts is still happening. Are we seeing it? And if we're not, why aren't we? Because we need to get back to the why we're created question. And we need to know who we are. We need to learn how to pray. You know, there's, there's prayers and then there's specific prayers. There's prayers and then we can also learn how to, um, like Daniel had specific prayers. We need to hear the Father. We need to partner with the Father. Then we need to speak it out. Say, for instance, if I say, I want to go out for supper with you sometime. John, let's go out for supper sometime. All right. But if I say, I want to go out tonight with you, there's something different than if we, if we start hearing the Father and speaking it. There's something about partnering with God, what He's saying for the hour and for the moment, and releasing it. That's powerful. You know, where two or three agree, everything starts going into motion, and earth is called to respond. It's the principle of God. To the good or to the bad. 
There's a power in, in partnership. There's a power in agreement. And the devil knows it too. That's why he tries to tell you that to speak out all these words that are wrong about yourself. He knows it's going to hinder your, your calling in life. He knows it's going to block you from what God wants for your life. He knows if you start speaking, I'm unworthy. I'm never going to amount to anything. I can't do it. Others can, but I can't. There's something about thinking it. There's even more power when you speak it. That's why we need to guard our tongues. We need to guard our minds and our thoughts. And we need to start agreeing with what God says. We need to get out of all this other junk. We need to start partnering with people that have the mind of Christ. That start speaking to you the mind of Christ. Because if you're not around people that are speaking the mind of Christ, then you wonder why you're defeated all the time. You know, I had a situation at home a few weeks ago. I'm not really proud of it. But I had a a group of puppies. And I knew there was fleas in the barn, but... God can protect them from the fleas, right? It's not a big deal. And uh, they were actually, you know, the, my best puppies I ever had. So uh, my daughters kept saying that there's fleas out in the barn when she goes to feed them. And I'm like, ah, flea time, they'll, go, they'll come and go, whatever. Anyway, as soon after about three weeks, these things started dying. The dogs. The dogs, started, the puppies started dying. And then it all all dying. And I said, well, that was the will of God. Praise God, they were destined to die. Right? <laughs> Isn't the, they were just created to die. Right? That's a mindset people have. That people are born to die. They're born and then after they're a couple of weeks old or whatever, they're just born to die. Now if I would have, why, why did they die? If they were born to die. They, were, they, they died because of ignorance, right? They died because of lack of knowledge on my end. They weren't destined to die. They were destined to be something. And that's how it is for you. You know what, Hosea 4, 6, I think it says, My people, it doesn't say the, it doesn't say the, 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 the enemy. It says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's why they were dying, lack of knowledge on my end. Well, since that, I got seven others that are more beautiful than the first ones. But they were in the same place. And I didn't know that I had to get them out of there. Till my brother-in-law came and was like, you need to get them out of here now or they're all going to die too. So what do I do then? Rebuke him? Command the fleas to die? Or do I move them out of there? You should tell him to just change the words that he spoke. Yeah, why didn't he just change the words? Why didn't he speak words of life instead of words of death? He said, I could, take, I could spray these things every day. I can take them out and spray them, fleas every day, and I put them back in there. They're going to be worse when, the, when, but they're going to be worse when I put them back in than they were when I took them out by the end of the day because they're, they're going to create more fleas faster than you can kill them. You've got to terminate the thing, right? So I had a choice. What am I going to do? Am I going to listen to somebody that walked through the same thing with experience? Or am I going to think my way is better and I'm just going to let him there? And sadly, you know, we see this thing in the body of Christ. Where there's people that have experience, they know what the person's going to walk through. And they know if he doesn't change anything, he's going to end up exactly over here the same way. Because it's a principle of God and they keep doing it. Well, I got him out of there. Praise God, right? And I got him cleaned up good and whatever else. And three weeks later, they're almost ready to sell and they're my nicest puppies I ever had. But do you know what would have happened if I wouldn't have got them out of there? They would have been destined to die. They would have been destined to die, right? Then we'll blame God and say, look, it's God's fault. It wasn't God's fault. God didn't do that. It was a dumb on my end, right? <laughs> and we see the people, we see people all around us walking in this stuff. They walk in unforgiveness and they confess what they all did, but they refuse to repent. And then they go back in this same stinking mess and they wonder why they end up the same way half a day later. Because it's infested with unforgiveness. It's infested with bitterness. And it's infested with shame. And whatever else. And they go right back in that thing. And then people try to clean them up again the next day. And then they go right back in. And they start dying away. And they start blaming God. It's not God's fault. They're just too ignorant. And too self-righteous to get out of that thing. And actually start being who God called them to be. There's action that's needed on your part. 
There's action that needed on your part. You need to get out of that mindset. You need to get out of that environment. And you need to start getting into an environment that is healthy, get in an environment that is clean, getting an environment where, where you can get built up and you can actually grow and get filled with the Spirit of God and grow to the fullness of what God has. It's all about partnership. It's about learning through others that have the experience. That's what I did in that situation. If I would have refused to listen to the guy that had the information just because I don't agree with him, everything he does in life, I would have missed that blessing. How many of us are missing this blessing even today? The missing the blessing of what's all around us because we're stuck in our own religious mindset that it's me, myself, and I, or maybe two or three or half a dozen others, and that's all we can talk to because this, this, is, this is our vision, this is our little thing. It's not your vision. If God laid something on your heart, it's not yours, it's God's. And God's going to bring other people around you to, to empower you into that vision. Another thing we got to talk about is, is programs. There's so many programs in people's lives. And we know with computers, when there are too many programs going, it will shut you down. And it's time to shut down these programs down that are running, these mindsets that are running in people's minds. Some of these have to be shut down. So you can actually start hearing God's voice. Start doing what God's calling you to do. You know, back when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, There's one thing that they got, to, they got to Jericho. And I believe there was so much murmuring, so much complaining, that they actually had to walk around Jericho for seven days and just be quiet so they can actually learn to hear God. You know, God's not interested in all this garbage that we keep speaking. Maybe He's asking some of us to just be quiet for a season. Just shut our mouth and actually listen to Him. For seven days they were supposed to just be quiet and march around there. And I believe that's an illustration of our life. There comes a season when we need to quiet these other voices. We need to stop listening to everything else that's out there. And we need to quiet ourselves before God and say, oh God, what are you saying? And then as we start doing that, God's saying, "Gonna do it more, do it more, do it more. And then on that seventh day when all of a sudden he says, now release life. Release a shout of joy. Release a shout of victory. And just like that, the walls start coming down around you. Because you were able to actually stop and listen to God. I like to talk also about the power of, of fruit. You know, as you journey on in life, there's different steps in life that you need to walk through. First of all, you need to start trusting people. God puts people in your life. You need to start trusting them. And as you start trusting them, the next step that you get is conflict. Well, that doesn't sound very good, does it? You just got done trusting someone and all of a sudden you have conflict. And how many of us can relate to that? Whenever there's people starting to come together, there's always, it seems, the first thing that comes up is conflict. People don't agree with each other. People start doing this. They start doing that. It's a part of pruning. It's a part of bringing out what's inside people. And after you work through that and you, don't, you said, you know what, I'm committed. We're going to walk through this. We're going to make it happen. No devil in hell is going to stop us. We're going to walk in the fullness of what God has for us. And when you start walking in a commitment, you can come to accountability. You can't have accountability without commitment. 
And you can't get accountability without working through these other things. Because it all, it all comes together as one when you walk together. And then the top is results. Everybody wants to see the fruit. Everybody wants to see the results. But how many people are willing to partner and trust others? How many, willing, how many people are willing to partner and let conflict come up? How many people are willing to be committed no matter what? How many people are willing to be accountable? If you're going to be willing to do these steps, you're going to have results. That's just the way it works. It's not... But what's the difference? What's the absence of this? What do we... Say, I am willing to trust others. I am willing to embrace conflict. I am willing to be committed to God and others. I'm willing to be accountable to God and others. I will see results. Because Jesus created me to see results. And that's why we see what we see when we do these things. We see the absence of trust. And you know, when you look at families all around you, you can see why everything is falling apart. We see the absence of trust, which brings in uh, invulnerability. We see the fear of conflict. Well, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to act like everything's fine, and we're not going to talk about it. And what does that bring? It brings artificial harmony. And what, did, what was the first scripture that we talked about tonight? Or is that this afternoon or this morning or whatever it is? We talked about how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in harmony. But if they're not willing to walk in this, what are, we're going to have fear of conflict, and then we're going to have artificial harmony. And then, because we have artificial harmony, we have lack of commitment, which brings uncertainty, unclear. It does. But that's what we're dealing with in the world around us. That's what's out there when you go out there as a minister. That's what the people are seeing. They don't understand the power of partnership, of coming together and working your stuff out. And that's why when you, when you walk through these things in a marriage, you start trusting each other, and you start dating, you think this is your greatest wife around, right? You start marrying her, and all of a sudden, things don't look the same anymore. You start having some conflict. And what does the world around you say? Well, you weren't meant for each other. Just separate. Find someone that you were meant for. And guess what? The next person has the same issues. That's why you're attracted to him. Because you're supposed to clean your life up. And you're saying, God's wanting you to clean your life up. So he's going to attract you to the same person you've got a problem with. And then guess what's going to happen? Conflict. And then you go through two, three, four, or five, right? And you have all these soul ties and garbage connected to you. And you wonder why your life is a mess. And then if you avoid the conflict, everything's uncertain. Then you avoid the accountability. Which results in low standards. Just me, myself out there. I can do it all alone. I don't need other people to tell me that I'm living wrong or whatever else. God and me, well, we're just going to go do it. And it creates low standards. And then you give inattention to results. Inattention. And that result, results in an ego. It's all about protecting myself, making myself look good. Because we're not allowing these things to flow the way they need to. And it's time that the body of Christ understands these concepts. That we understand why we were created. What our purpose is. That we get back to what our forefathers did. And the early church. Why we're here. We're called to bring change to this situation. 
We're called to bring change to this county. We're changed, called to bring change to these people groups. God is, you know, when God is in you, there's nothing that can stop you. You and God. And you think a little religious spirit or a person's opinion is going to stop you? When you're connected to God, what does Philippians 4, 7 says? God's going to guard your mind and your heart in Christ Jesus. How does it look when God guards you? Are you concerned if a person around you has a problem with it? When God is inside you propelling you into something and He's guarding your mind and your heart? I believe there's also something about when God guards us, we don't even stop and think about what other people think about us. It's like it doesn't even cross our radar screen that this guy might have a problem because it doesn't bother you. Because God has guarded you where you don't even, you're, it's like, what does that matter? I mean, just, and I think oftentimes it doesn't even, it doesn't even cross our radar screen because it's like guarded before it ever gets to you. The thoughts of what this guy would have toward you all of a sudden don't matter anymore. God, you know, there was a time when you drove down the road and you're thinking, what does this guy think of me? What does this guy think of whatever we're doing, whatever else? But then time, comes a time when you're saying, I don't feel any more resistance. And don't you think it's because you're guarded? You're actually guarded against that. You know why you're created, who you are, why you're there. And you're going to keep doing it because God is on the inside of you. That's some good stuff, right? Christ in you, the hope of glory. I mean, Christ in us, full of the Holy Spirit, full of the life of God in us. We don't have any time to be depressed. We've been chosen of God. We've been chosen of God for this generation to bring life and to bring change Amen. and to bring holiness. Why are we walking around in depression and defeat? There's no defeat in God. God doesn't look at us and say, well, you're going to be defeated today. That's not a wor wor the words of God. God says, you're more than a conqueror. God says, I'm going to raise you up to be an ambassador for me. God says, I'm going to use you to change situations that are around. I'm going to use you and I'm going to part you, partner you with you, 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 and you. And you're going to make a dynamic force that's going to go out and destroy every stronghold and every work of the evil one. God says, I'm going to use you. Will you be willing? Yeah, we're going to be willing. And that's what God's doing in this, this time and this season. So my question is, what's holding you back? Where do you want to go with your life? Are you willing to be sold out for God? What if other people say you can't do it? <laughs> do we really understand the Holy Spirit? You know, the Holy Spirit in you is better than the Holy Spirit beside you. And you know, we can look back in Jesus' time and we can say, that was really great. Jesus was here. Man, if Jesus would only show up today, if you just be beside me to tell me what to do in this situation, that would be so wonderful, wouldn't it? We would think that we have the best thing around. But you know, the Holy Spirit is actually even better than that. God says, I'm going to go and I'm going to release a comforter. The Holy Spirit lives in us. We don't need to just wait, hope, hope that He shows up in our town tomorrow. We have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. And when we invite the Holy Spirit to come and live in us, that's a powerful force. Do we have any visual idea? Can we, even, we can't even grasp with our minds what's inside of us ready to explode at our obedience. At our willingness and say, yes, Lord, I am willing. And as we do that, we're going to see situations that we come up against. And they're going to, they're going to be an impact, but it's going to change. Because God lives in you. You know, the only reason that Saul wanted to kill David was but he was mad because he missed his turn. There was a time in Saul's life when he was called to do what David was doing. He was called to go out and fight that Goliath. It was his call. It was what God had for his life. I believe it was. But he didn't want to, walk. He didn't want to step into and do it. So there's probably going to be people that come against you because they're not willing to do what God had called them to do. 
My question is, are you going to pull back then or are you going to press forward? Because there's people around, all around you that are refusing to step into the why they've been created. And they're going to be your hardest oppressors. Because they can't do that. And they're going to come up with all kinds of excuses. My question is, are you going to listen to that? Are you going to listen to that? They're saying, well, where are the results? I don't see enough of results yet. Well, guess why? They're not in the two and a half percent. They're not willing to go there. They might be the laggers. Who knows? God doesn't want them to be back there. They might be back here saying, I'm not going to do it till everybody else does it. My question is, will you be among the two and a half percent that will connect and that will actually start going out and doing it? How will you take Christ to the end of the earth if you can't even take him to the end of your block? How are you going to take Christ? You know, Jesus said to start in Jerusalem and then Judea and then the ends of the earth. How many people want to go out there but they don't even want to start proclaiming Christ in their own house and in their own neighborhood? I believe that the reason that it says that is because they're supposed to start releasing that fear what other people think about them. And once they start releasing that fear, they can actually step into the next situation, step into what God has called them to. So I challenge you today to start speaking it. Start releasing what God gives you. You know, God's got the fire if you got the feet. Joshua was told everywhere he steps, he's going to be his. And that's what God's telling you today. Everything that I put inside you that you desire is from me. God says, I'm going to give it to you. If you're going to be willing by faith to step into it. You know, there have been people that have been sitting too long. They've been wandering around the wilderness too long. Saying, I can't do this. I can't do this. Others can, but I can't. And God's calling you out of the wilderness. To start being activated. You know, Matthew 28, I'm going to close there, verse 18 to 20. What does what is Jesus' last words before he left? And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power. All power. Everybody say, All power, all power. Is, given is given unto me, unto me. in heaven and in earth. Go ye, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Father and of the Son, and of the, Son and, of the and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them, teaching them to observe all things, observe whatsoever, whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am always with you, Lord, even unto the end of the world. The the you know, it's all missed his turn. Why don't you tell somebody beside you, don't miss your turn. You know, there's something that's being released. There's something that's being released in this day and this hour. And I don't want you to miss it. Because you're going to be extremely sad and depressed if you do. Your life isn't going to work if you miss what God's doing right now. So I encourage you to step into what God's giving you. Because you have the authority. You have the power. The Word of God is backing you up. When you go out to heal the sick and you proclaim the word of God over them, God's going to release his anointing, just like Brother Scott said. As you go out there and proclaim the good news, it's not about what you say. Yeah, it is about what you say. What did I just say? <laughs> See, it's all right. It's not about what you say, but still it is. Because God speaks through you. God gives you the revelation. God lives in you and you speak it out. And when you speak that out, situations change. Just as you can come in your house and you can set the tone for the evening. You can set the tone for somebody else's life. Just as you walk up to them. You can come up and give them a prophetic word, what God has for them. And completely change what their day was going to be. We have that ability in us. All power. In heaven and in earth. God's saying, I'm going to give you this. And God says, you're going to go out. And God says, every snake and scorpion says, I'm going to destroy them. What did he say? Trample on them. But there's also a reason why he, why he told them to go out there by twos. Why did he tell the disciples to go out two by two? It's the power of partnership. 
Why didn't he just say, go out alone and do your thing? Because he realized when those two come together, when, that's, when those two or three come together, that it creates a force that is needed to break through the next level. And when you understand that, even, even the, the whole thing of how a marriage is designed, you know, a man is designed to release seed, and a woman is designed to receive seed. And so many people get this all mixed up. They don't understand why this other person thinks different than what they do. But it's the way people are designed. And we're also designed to receive seed in one sense from God because God gives us continued downloads. So I'm going to encourage you to go out in faith, proclaiming the good news because God has a host of angels that are being released even right now. Strongholds are coming down around you. You might not see them, but I guarantee you they're coming down. There's going to be breakthroughs in the next few years, the next few months, the next few days in ways that you've not yet seen. Amen. Because God is destroying stronghold. God is doing a new work in our day. We don't have to sit back and be, be, be depressed. We can rejoice because God is lining things up. God is bringing ministries together that are partnering together. And it is so beautiful. Brother Craig and I get together every Friday morning to pray for the last couple of years. And he shows up. And everybody gets excited, right? And then this brother shows up. And then this brother shows up. And soon you have eight or ten fired up people for God coming together to pray. And guess what's going to happen? We're going to pray and things are going to shift. Impact. Impact. That's right. But that's what God has for you. So I would encourage you. If you're not connected with somebody around you with, that's filled with the Spirit of God, get connected. Get connected with others that have the same passion. Other areas, whatever, because it doesn't, it doesn't just stop right where you're at either. It doesn't just stop in your community. There's outreaches in other areas, other states, and other nations that God has for you down in the future. Start listening to God and start stepping out and watch what God has for you. Because it's going to be an amazing thing as you journey with Him. Praise God. God bless you.